Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Gadrak, the Crown Scourge deck, the 3 mana 5-4 Legendary Dragon from M21 with flying, but Gadrak can't attack unless we control 4 or more artifacts. And to help us make more artifacts, at the beginning of our end step we get to make a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn, and a treasure token is an artifact that we can tap and sacrifice to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Now, there's a few ways we could build around Gadrak. The most straightforward way would be to put it in some sort of red-black sacrifice deck alongside Witches Oven and Cauldron Familiar, and then every turn where we sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar in our turn, we get to make a treasure token, so that could help us enable Gadrak. But I don't think the world needs more sacrifice decks, so instead I put it in a artifact aggro deck alongside Steel Overseer and Friends, and that way we just get to play a whole bunch of cheap artifacts ourselves to help us enable Gadrak and make it a nice 5-4 flying attacker, which can help us close out the game pretty quickly. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our 1-drops, and one of the few non-artifact cards in the deck is 4 copies of Shock as just a cheap burn spell to deal 2 damage to any target, and if we kill a creature from the opponent during our turn, that's another way of making an artifact token with Gadrak, so it also counts the opponent's creatures dying, so that's potentially still quite synergistic in our deck. Then we've got our full playset of Ginger Brutes, that is a 1-1 with haste, that potentially can be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste if we pay the 1 mana, and can also be sacrificed to gain 3 life, so it just gives us a nice cheap evasive attacker. And then Inquisitive Puppet, much less impressive than the Ginger Brute, a 1 mana 0-2 construct that when it enters the battlefield lets us scry 1, so can potentially help us set up our future draws. And then we can also exile the puppet to make a 1-1 white human creature token. Typically we want to keep the puppet as an artifact in place, so it synergizes with Gadrak and with our Steel Overseer. But every now and then you'll exile it to make the 1-1 token, can maybe chum block with it and then still make the token afterwards. And then uh, sadly the puppet exiles and doesn't sacrifice, so it won't leave behind a treasure token with Gadrak, so that's a bit of a nombo. Luckily our next artifact creature is much more impressive, Stone Coil Serpent, X in the casting cost, and then we have a Reach Trample creature with protection from multicolored that enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so we can play it for 1 mana if we want to curve out, but we can also play later for much more. Then at 2 mana we've got our full playset of Steel Overseer, this is the centerpiece of the deck alongside Gadrak, a 2 mana 1 1 construct that we can tap to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each artifact creature we control, so this is another incentive to play a whole bunch of cheap artifact creatures. And then a Mask of Emulations, another interesting addition, a 2 mana artifact equipment that comes attached to a 1 1 elemental, and the equipped creature can be sacrificed at any point to deal 1 damage to any target, and then we can move the mask for 2 mana. One thing to keep in mind is that Gandrak doesn't make treasure tokens for tokens that die, so if we sacrifice the elemental in our turn it's not necessarily making a treasure, but of course if we can kill an opposing creature with the one damage, then that will generate a treasure token if it happens in our turn. So the mask gives us a way to finish off small creatures, and can also potentially help us close out the game if the opponent's low on life, we can just sacrifice the mask, move it to a different creature, and burn the opponent out. And then at 3 mana we've got Gadrak, a 5-4 flyer that we can usually attack with the turn after we play it. And Clockwork Servant, a 3 mana 2-3 that under most circumstances draws a card when it enters the battlefield. And then finally we've got some more card draw engines with Mystic Forge, a 4 mana artifact that lets us take a look at the top card of our library. And we can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of our library as well. And we can also tap Mystic Forge and pay one life in order to exile the top card of our library, maybe get rid of a land that's stuck on top and then cast the next card if it's an artifact or colorless spell. And then lastly we've got two copies of Embercleave, we're playing an aggressive red deck with an artifact theme, so it's difficult not to include the legendary equipment. It has flash, it costs one less to cast for each attacking creature we control, and then when Embercleave enters the battlefield we can attach it to a creature we control, giving it plus one plus one, a double strike and trample, and then we can move the Embercleave for three mana afterwards, so it makes for a nice pair alongside Gadrak. And then the mana base, we've got 20 basic mountains and 4 castle embreths, which are also nice to give our creatures one additional power. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Pretty happy to play the Serpent for one mana here since we can curve out with Steel Overseer and Clockwork Servant. Facing Grazer. Second Overseer is another nice pickup. We've got our four artifacts to enable Gadrak if we draw it. Aha, uh -huh. opponent on Naya, so this could be a Winota deck. Tithe Taker. Second Ember Cleave, not the best draw. I am tempted to play the second Overseer before we play the Servant, just to get those going. I have to remember that I have to pay one mana if I activate Steel Overseer in the opponent's turn. So that still works out next turn if we play Steel Overseer and have one mana left over. But that's not gonna work in future turns. And there's Hactos. So yeah, definitely looks like a Winota deck. Hactos rolled three. So I could play the Clockwork Servant here to trade off. Don't really want to take six. Yeah, fine. So now I'll have to use the Overseer in my turn. Basri's Lieutenants. Can't target Hactos since uh, convert mana cost 4 means Hactos has protection from the Lieutenants. So puts the counter on Tithe Taker. We'll trade here. Alright, just a double steel Overseer turn, I think. Could also shock the Tithe Taker. But then they get a token from the Lieutenant, so it's not super useful. Alright, so I'll take another hit here, but then next turn we should be able to block. Or we can maybe start attacking with the Ember Cleave as well. So I'll take six. And the Hanged Executioner, we can shock. Yeah, the Winota deck without Winota is not too scary. And now I can activate the Overseers in the opponent's turn since I can pay for the Tithe Taker tax. And then next turn we can maybe attack alongside Ember Cleave. Some more non-human tokens. Castle Embereth is a nice one too. Um, can I attack with everyone? Do have to be a little bit careful that I don't die on the crackback. 16. Yeah, I don't think I can attack with everyone. Let's just send one Serpent and a 6-6 six, six Overseer. And we'll see what happens. Alright, this should work out fine. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hands not amazing, but maybe still keepable. The creatures are a bit tiny, so they're not the best alongside Embercleave, but if we can find a Gadrak, this hand could be quite good. So I might want to play the Puppet first, although I do still need a third land as well as action, so the scry from Puppet's not super valuable at the moment. And then I probably want to play Mask on turn 2, so we'll play the Puppet on 3 maybe. 
And by then maybe we'll have drawn a land or a three drop and we can use a scry accordingly. Turn one scorpion, so some sort of sacrifice deck and there's Gadrak. I guess I would like to play Gadrak on curve, but that's going to be difficult if I play Puppet here. Because I probably wouldn't be able to attack with Gadrak on turn 4 if I have two masks in hand. So black-white sacrifice deck with Hunted Witness. And Cauldron Familiar. Alright. And yeah, perfect. We get to play Gadrak. And then I could kill the Familiar now to get my treasure token, which I don't mind. I could potentially hold the mask in case my opponent plays a Priest of Forgotten God, so I can use both masks to finish off a two-toughness creature. And yep, there's a Priest. But I can just sacrifice a Puppet to the Priest, it's not too bad. Probably worth it to play Clockwork Servants. And then next turn I could be attacking with Embercleave. Strider. Don't think there's any upside to exiling the puppet first. And the Lurus, that's potentially a problem. So we know we're drawing out our servants. So if I attack with Gadrak with a cleave on it, I could also attack with a Ginger Brute since it basically costs me the same as paying one extra for the Ember Cleave. And does a servant attack? I guess I might as well. They're unlikely to trade Lurus or Strider for Servants. And I could always decide to use Cleave on Servant instead of on Gadrak. What I want to avoid is losing a bunch of creatures and then having the Priests kill my Gadrak. Which is maybe what they're trying to set up with this play. My main concern is something like a Deadweight or a Myers Grasp killing the Brute and then Priest getting access to Gadrak. Although if I cleave Gadrak, I do hit them for 12 in the air, so I can potentially kill him next turn. So this is a close decision. Alternatively, I could have also let the trade happen and just play another Servant. I think I'll play it like this. Opponent's still at 5, we get a treasure token, and uh, they still need an answer to Gadrak here in order to survive. And there's Oven. At least we don't need to fear uh, Claim the Firstborn stealing my dragon. But they can potentially make a food token for a bit of additional life gain. So we'll see. Mm. 
Midnight Reaper is not really gonna help their cause in terms of uh, staying alive. But maybe they want to draw towards something. So it goes back up to eight. They have access to two life from the Scorpion, although it's only one with Reaper dealing them one damage. And then two mana can be spent on a food token for three more life. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna equip Gadrak here and attack in the air. Alright, so sacrifice a scorpion. But even with three life gain from the food, this is still lethal. They're gonna bring back the Cauldron Familiar instead. Alright, let's get in there. And this seems to be working. Sweet, so Gavrank plus Ambercleave gets the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This ends okay. We've got some nice cheap cards to play early and then Mystic Forge to help us refuel in the late game. Facing a similar start. Play the mask. Potent could have a pump spell, but we'll wait and see here. Can just block with a token. Seasoned Hallow Blade. Interesting. So now I'm tempted to wait on sacrificing the elemental until they attack with the Hallow Blade so we can maybe uh, prevent some damage. Don't really want to attack with the Ginger Brutes. Because we might need artifacts in play if we draw Steel Overseer or Gadrak. Selfless Savior, sure. No attacks. And there's Gadrak, speak of the devil. So now we're kind of incentivized to use the elemental token this turn here. So we get a treasure token. And then the treasure tokens that uh, Gadrak provides Synergize nicely with the Mystic Forge, giving us additional mana to cast spells of the top. Legion Warboss, their opponents also looking like a Winota deck with a nice mix of humans and non-humans. Another Gadrak. So, probably just gonna play the Forge, see what's on top. Can't quite play the Servant, but I also don't wanna get rid of it, so we'll just draw it next turn. Could sack the treasure in order to equip the mask. Which could be worth it if they play Winota so I can kill the brutes. Sure. And then I'll attack with Gadrak. 
Could also sank the brute now to kill the brute from the opponents. So we at least get a treasure token. Maybe that's actually better. We in fact get two treasure tokens here. So we know that would give them two triggers, instead it's another Brute, which I'm again happy to kill with the Mask. Maybe they have an Ember Cleave here, which is why the war boss is attacking. Well, guess we'll find out. Could also block the Ginger Brute instead. That plays a best around cleave, but then they're not forced to use it. Now let's just block the war boss. Yep. That's fine. Alright, so we'll draw the castle. If we draw cleave, we can kill him. Stone Cold Serpent's not too bad. Could just play it as a 1-1. One -one. Get rid of the lands. And a shock on top, which I can't get access to. Opponent is at 11, so if I can attack them with Gadrak... I can finish him off next turn with another attack and a mask activation. So I think what I'm gonna do is... Equip Serpents. And then I can... Attack with Gadrak. Kill the Ginger Brood by sacking Serpents. And then I can equip the Mask to another creature, as well as keep up the mana to sack Brood to gain life. So I guess it makes sense to equip the Servant here. Do need to make sure I have enough artifacts for next turn, but I'll get two more treasures here. Hmm, maybe that's actually bad to equip. Because right now the plan is to chump the Hollow Blade with the Ginger Brute. I can put Servant in front of War Boss, gain three, and I should be fine. Yeah, I guess we'll just pass. And then I'll still have enough artifacts for Gadrak to attack. We'll draw Shock, and that's another to damage. War boss makes another token. Thanks with all. Block like this. So this has me taking 7 damage. We do see the watchdogs are upon displaying the Alpine Houndmaster and the uh, dog package. Alright, another Hello Blade. And we get to play Serpent of the Top. Another Mystic Forge. It's not gonna be necessary. Smack for five. And then uh, Gadrak can close out the game himself. 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And yeah, the sand seems fine. We've got our signature cards. Puppet can maybe help us find a fourth artifact to enable Gadrak. And Healer's Hawk, a nice target for Mask of Emulation. Castle Embereth. Do I want land for? I don't really need land for right away. If this is a blue white flyer's deck, I also want to dig for Stone Coil Serpents. Not a Healer's Hawk. And a Hunted Witness, so it looks like a White Weenie deck instead. Now they could have an Anthem next turn to give all their creatures plus one plus one. So I might still want to play Mask before I play Steel Overseer. Then again, Gadrak can just block the Healer's Hawks. Um, how important is it to play Overseer this turn? Typically it's better to get the Overseer going first. And yeah, given that we have a Gadrak to block the Healer's Hawks if they have an Anthem effect, I think that's okay. Otherwise, I might want to prioritize playing the Mask so we can make sure we can kill at least one of the Hawks. Just block the Witness. Another Hawk. And a Garrison Cat. Well, they might have a 3 mana payoff in hand, but they just don't have the mana to cast it yet. Alright, that's a lot of Gadrax. Well, I guess I'll play one to hold off the Hawks, especially if they have an Anthem. Probably won't be able to attack with it next turn, but I can play Mask, kill a Hawk, and then the uh, Gadrax would pick up a treasure token. They did have a formation, so they do get to attack unpunished. So the mask won't be able to kill any hawks. But we can prevent a bit of damage here, at least. Amber Cleave's gonna be nice. All right, we'll pass, and uh, next turn we can maybe attack with Gadrak. Executioner, that one we can kill with a mask. And since we're killing a creature, Gadrak will give us some treasure. And then I can move the mask somewhere else. Could also attack with Gadrak, play another one. Don't think that's quite worth it. I guess we'll just equip Gadrak and then maybe we'll sacrifice Gadrak at some point. Opponent passes. Alright, we somehow managed to draw all four Gadrax. This is awkward. Maybe our opponent's gonna trade for the two Hawks, who knows. Opponent just takes it. Yeah, I don't think I can afford to cleave, so we'll just deal five. Finish off the spirits. Play another Gadrak. And equip. Alright, a Brood Moth. That's a scary card. So now they might attack with everyone. Each creature we kill turns into a flyer for next turn. At least the Hawks I can kind of kill for free here. But do I block Witness or uh, the Garrison Cat here? Point still at 24, they're gonna go up to 30. So we're not killing them anytime soon, even with a cleave.
Shock could be useful. We could kill the Brood Moth, but it's gonna take a lot of sacrifices. And then I'll probably end up without a Gadrak to block with. So that doesn't seem like the best idea. Yeah, I do have to start attacking. I'll send in the Clockwork Servant. And then we'll cleave. I probably need to keep the Steel Overseer back to block here. Yeah, I don't think it's wise to tap the Overseer. And I'll pass. Now the Shock can deal with the Hawk. And then there's a small chance we can figure out a way to win on the crank back. So I could deny the life gain by sacking Gadrak after blocking and then shocking the other hawk. Opponent would still be at 18. And then next turn this would be an 8 power double striking trampler. And I can make a 9 with Castle. So we're getting close to a lethal attack. Yeah, you know what? I think it's worth it here. Block a Hawk. Shock another one. And then I could kill the lifelinking token or I can go face. Guess I'll kill the lifelinker. Not the best draw. So I can play Gadrak, equip it with the mask to clear the other blocker. And then force a chum block. So attack with the servants. This is fourteen. And the puppets, they'll have to block with a brood moth, and I'm not dead on the way back. I guess Steel Overseer should have attacked here, no real reason not to. And then if they have nothing, they would have just died. Now we give them one additional draw step to potentially top that another Anthem effect to kill us. So that's pretty bad. And I can move the equipment once again. So I can kill any of the 1-1s one if they have another pump effect. Alright, let's cross our fingers. Opponent attacks. I'll take 4 down to 1. And another Brute Moth, that doesn't do it. Let the animation finish. And our point explodes. Wow, close game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hands okay. Turn 2 Steel Overseer, turn 3 Servant, turn 4 Double Mask. So if our Steel Overseer survives, this could work out nicely. Although Temple of Epiphany is not a good sign. I might have played Stone Coil for one if we had it in our opening hands. Alright, hopefully no shock. Opponent passes. Alright, looks like we're in the clear. I 
and then I might want to just play a 4-4 Serpent. Well, if they're keeping up a counter spell, I guess Double Mask makes more sense. Or maybe Mask plus a 2-2 Serpent. Especially if they counter here. That resolves. I'll just attack with the Servant. You steal Overseer. And play another Mask. Opponent does nothing. Well, Storm's Wrath doesn't kill the Servant at least. Gets green mana for a Reclamation instead. Alright, so they were a Reclamation deck after all. Good to know. So they might have a counterspell here that they weren't willing to use on Mask. Let's see if they have a response on an Inquisitive Puppet here. I might just activate Castle instead of um, playing Stone Coil if it's going to get countered anyway. Resolves. Stone Coil, I guess I'll keep. Yeah, I think I'm better off just attacking with the Steel Overseer instead of uh, tapping it. Although it's a close call. And then we'll activate Castle. Wait for a potential response. If they have a Flame Sweep, I guess I want to make a different play. Shark Typhoon for two. Sure. Just gonna use Castle. Nine, ten, eleven. Probably worth it to trade. And now their opponent's at five. We could potentially just burn them out by moving the mask a few times. Expansion Explosion wouldn't even be that bad here, since it still leaves them dead on board. And yeah, opponent explodes. Sweet, so it's not like you get to beat Wilner's Reclamation decks every day. But having a nice aggressive start, opponent didn't have any interaction to kill or steal Overseer. And then we were able to kind of play around any potential counter spells by leveraging our board presence making use of our activated ability on Castle instead, and the Mask, a nice way to potentially close out the game as well. Sweet, so somehow managed to go undefeated with our Red Hot Steel deck, did not expect that, didn't think the deck was all that good, but uh, had some good draws, we drew Gadrak and Steel Overseer and Embercleave a good amount, and those are definitely the cards that are going to carry us in most games. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.